When World War I kicked off, most European powers were caught off guard regarding the Air Force. But Austria-Hungary was particularly disadvantaged due to its additional military and civilian leadership, combined with a relatively undeveloped industrial base. The Empire's agricultural economy didn't exactly scream innovation. Instead of setting up dedicated assembly lines for aircraft production, contracts were let out to multiple factories, which led to a mix and mash approach where individual factories churned out different types of planes. To make matters worse, there was a shortage of unskilled labor that slowed down the production. And if you thought things couldn't get any more outdated, just think again. For example, the Hansa Brandenburg fighter didn't have a gun synchronization gear, which meant pilots could not simply aim with the nose of the airplane. So we can establish already that the Austro-Hungarian Air Force was severely disadvantaged compared to other empires. Fast forward to wartime production and Austro-Hungary managed to crank out around 5180 planes over 4 years of war. That's nothing compared to Italy which built roughly 18,000 planes just in 3 years. We also have to differentiate between the two branches of the Air Force based on the type of machines, the airplanes and the airships. Before the war, the army operated a small fleet of airships. We are talking about four in total. Militar Luftschiff 1, 2, 3 and 4. The number 3 was destroyed in a midair collision with the Farman HF-20 on 20th of June 1914 and this accident effectively ended the airship program. Nevertheless, during the war, the military tried to get their hands on some Zeppelins from Germany but ultimately failed. The Navy even ordered four to be locally manufactured in 1917, but none of them were completed before the armistice. Those airships were eventually scrapped by the Allies after the war. The aircrafts were employed by the air service were a combination of Austro-Hungarian designs built within the Empire, German models that were domestically manufactured by Austrian firms, quite often with modifications, and aircrafts that were imported from Germany. The most often used type of planes were the Fokkers, the Lochners, the Hansa Brandenburgs and the Albatrosses. The KUK Luftfahrtruppen was organized into a three-level organization. At the top was the Flieger Arsenal, FLARS as short, which meant Aviation Arsenal, a complex bureau of working under the Ministry of War. New airplanes were shipped from the factory to one of these five flares groups for acceptance. Then the flares forwarded the aircraft received to the aviation parks, which called the Flieger Tappen Park. These flaps were each responsible for supplying a combat sector of the Austro-Hungarian forces. They supplied hardware and supplies to the aviation units. They also served as a repair depot for severely damaged aircraft. They would repair some airplanes that were damaged beyond the front line units repair capabilities. And and send the worst back to the factory. There were three flowers at the war's beginning and there were 11 by the war's end. Finally, there were the line units of the Luftfahrtruppe. These Flieger companies were understaffed, hardly ever having more than 8 pilots per unit and there were 77 flicks in existence by the end of the war. At the outbreak of the First World War, the Austro-Hungarian aircrafts were brightly painted in a red and white bands all along the fuselage. These were swiftly discarded, but the red-white red bands on the wingtips and tail remained. Aircraft supplied from Germany generally arrived with the black cross marking already applied. This was adopted officially from 1916, but individual aircraft occasionally kept some red-white red bands. Austro-Hungary produced seaplanes also during the war. These naval aircrafts were more elaborately marked. Typically, a flying boat had a black cross pate on the box of a white background for national insignia. The air service began in 1893 as a balloon corps and would later be organized in 1912 under the command of Major Emil Uzalak. He was an army engineering officer and would remain under his command until the end of the World War I in 1918. At the outbreak of the war, the air services was composed of 10 observation balloons, 85 pilots and 13 operational aircrafts. By the end of 1940, there were already 147 operational aircraft deployed in 14 units. The air services had a separate army and the naval aviation arms. The later operated offshore seaplanes on the Adriatic coast from the stations where they also hosted bombers. Lochners were the most common variants, the key series heavy bombers mounted an offensive against the Italians quite often. The Austro-Hungarian air services took their fair share in the invasion of the Serbian kingdom. On 30 of September 1915, Troops of the Serbian army noticed three Austro-Hungarian aircraft 
just approaching Kragujevac. The Serbian soldiers shot at them with shotguns and machine guns but failed to prevent them from dropping around 45 bombs over the city, hitting military installations, the railway station and many other targets in the city. During the bombing raid, Private Radojel Lujtovac from the Serbian army fired and managed to shoot down one with a towed artillery gun. This was the first occasion that the military aircraft was shot down with artillery gun to air fire. Italy's entry into the war on 15th of May 1915 made matters worse and opened another front by bringing the empire's greatest opponents into the air war. The new front line was in the southern Alps, where those unforgiving mountains made flying these very rudimental planes extremely dangerous already, let alone trying to shoot down each other up in the sky. To help Italy's initial shortage of fighter planes on the front, France posted a squadron to defend Venice from the Austro-Hungarians. The empire recognized its shortcoming on the air front, so the 1916 Austro-Hungarian aviation program called for an expansion to 40 squadrons by the year's end, but only 37 were established. Two-seater reconnaissance and bomber squadrons often had a few single-seat fighters as escorts on missions. This reflected the army's high command emphasis on tying fighters to a defensive duty. During 1917, Austro-Hungary pushed its number of flying training schools to 14, with around 1,100 trainees. The expansion program program was stretched to 68 squadrons, and the air services managed to stop the 31 units needed. In the meantime, the Luftfahrtruppe began to lose its Italian campaign due to the Italian superior numbers. By 19th of June 1917, the situation had worsened to the point where an Italian attack force of 61 bombers and 84 escorting planes was opposed by an Austro-Hungarian defense force of only 3 fighters and 23 two-seaters. Within two months, the Luftfahrtruppe found itself facing over 200 enemy aircraft a day. Let's not forget that Italy also got a boost from the United Kingdom. They essentially borrowed four squadrons of the Royal Flying Corps to beef up the fighter forces after the Battle of Caporetto. But then when winter rolled around, things got tough for the Austro-Hungary's air services. They faced shortages of coal and other essential supplies which made it harder to keep producing planes. Austro-Hungarian plans for 1918 called for an increasing its aerial force to 100 squadrons containing around 1000 pilots. Production climbed to 2378 aircraft for the year, however, the withdrawal of German air units to fight in France worsened the Austro-Hungarian shortage of aircraft. By June 1918, the Luftfahrt Truppen strength peaked at 77 squadrons, but only 16 were fighter squadrons. By 26th of October, a fighter mass of some 400 Italian, British and French airplanes attacked in the air as the Italian army conducted the another offensive. The depleted Austro-Hungarians could send only 29 airplanes in opposition. Regardless of the enormous numerical superiority, the Austro-Hungarians took up the fight and tried their best, however, they stood very little chance to stop the offensive. Not much later, the armistice on 3rd of November 1918 was the effective end of the Luftfahrtruppen as its parent nation passed into history. Luftfahrtruppen strength had peaked at only 550 aircraft during the war, despite having four fronts to cover. Its wartime losses amounted to 20% of its naval flyers killed in action or accident and 38% of its army aviators. Although the Austro-Hungarian Air Force was not the most famous or most celebrated part of the armed forces, it had its fair share from the war and stand its ground against an overwhelming opposition. So we definitely should talk about these heroes more. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and maybe you learned something new and please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you in the next one.